Hi, I'm Jesper, part of the ST Touch DFX team. Uh, in this video, I would like to show you about video support, a new feature that has been added to the Touch DFX Designer 4.18. I have here the new 4.18, and I'll just uh, create a new uh, project create, uh, based on the simulator. What I'll show you is how to use the video widget, how to interact with it, and how to convert a video file into the right formats to be used in TouchDFX. But first, let's build our uh, screen. For that, I'll add an uh, image as a background. Uh, let's see, there's a style here we can use. Let's call it uh, background. Then let's add the video widget itself. So it's here. Um, so a video widget has a sample of uh, video files that we can choose from uh, in a, a prototype phase. Um, so let's select this one and center it. Let's try to run the program and see uh, how it looks. So it's here and it's playing. Great. So there are some options here in the properties. So one of them is autoplay. That was why it started playing uh, when the screen enters. Uh, we could also have it loop, so run over and over again. If I wanted to choose not a sample, but a uh, video file of my own, I would set it here. I would do that uh, later in this uh, video. Okay, that was easy. So let's try to make some interaction with the video. Um, the easiest thing is to add a, uh, add a button. So let's have a button here um, that we could uh, make an interaction with. So let's see here. So I could say when the button is clicked, uh, this button here, then I want to do something with my video. And I have a couple of options here. So pause video, play video, and stop video. Uh, so I could say pause video, uh, compile, and see if it, it works. <coughs> yep, so we have the video playing and the pause video pauses. Great. Adding yet another button if I want to uh, play it again. So button click, uh, button two, action, uh, play video. It's here. Okay. Run again. And that's uh, should be it. Over here, play, stop. Perfect. A third option is to, uh, instead of uh, have it play, uh, stop the video. So stopping the video will uh, make it go uh, back to frame uh, number one. So when you play it again, it will start from, from, from the beginning. Okay, so that's the basic functionality of the video widget. Uh, of course, you can do a lot more, so something like seeking uh, uh, within the range of all the frames in the, in the video. Uh, all of this can be accessed uh, through user code. Um, you can also stop and, and start the video and, and stuff like that from user code, of course. Okay, so the next thing I would like to show you is how to convert a, a video file of whatever format, so MP4 or something like that, uh, into a motion JPEG uh, AVI file, which is uh, what we need to use uh, to use this uh, video widget in TouchDFX. So what I'll do is I'll open the TouchDFX environment, so shell here. Um, I have downloaded a program called FFmpeg, uh, which is a free tool for uh, used to, to, to convert between uh, different uh, file formats, video file formats. 
uh, pretty nice too. Um, so I'll navigate to that directory, um, the binary. So the argument is this one. It takes a lot of, of uh, arguments, of course. Uh, some of them uh, I'll show you here. So the input file is an MP4 file I, I have in this directory. Um, the uh, output uh, format um, should be motion JPEG. Uh, the scale will be one. And the quality, uh, you can give an, uh, an argument here, uh, I'll say two, it's, it's uh, ranges from two on upwards and two is, is uh, the highest quality. Uh, this has an impact on the size of the file, of course. Um, so the output uh, file I'll put in the video directory as well. I'll call it uh, a.adi. Yes, and we see we now have the a.avi file. Um, so if we go back to our application, select the video, and then try to find the file, it's here. And we see that the video is now some sort of coffee beans. <coughs> Okay, so that was a very uh, fast, uh, let me see here, it runs this. Um, yeah, this was a fast introduction to the FFmpeg, uh, play around with it, read the documentation and so on, or use other tools, uh, tools as, uh, as well, there's a, a lot of them out there. And that was what I wanted to show you in this video regarding video support. We have a lot of documentation on this. Naturally, there's a lot of other things you can do uh, with videos in, in TouchDFX. One big topic is how to get this to run on a STM32-based board. Um, there's uh, some articles on that. Uh, you can use the generator to generate a lot of the code you need, but there is some setting up on this, so on target, something like the buffer scheme used is quite important. So will you use zero, one or two video buffers when decoding the images? As said, all of this is covered in the documentation. There's some link below also where you can, uh, you can follow and, and, and read it uh, directly. That's all for me. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye bye.